am. But I think it's important for you to know that the show is doing very well indeed, and I hope to build on this this year in 2016. And uh, we'll see where that goes. I can't promise you that I'll be on the air in 2017 anywhere. I may decide I've had enough. It's that simple. I may decide that this is it. I may decide this is it. I may decide I've had enough. I may take you through the election and then disappear and never be seen again or heard from again. Or I may not. I have to see how the year goes. But this is a big year for talk radio. It's a big year for myself. And frankly, we don't know what the year is going to bring. Except we have a maniac in the White House who continues to upset the apple cart. He has a vendetta against all things dear to this nation, including the Constitution itself, as you well know. And I would be remiss to tell you that I don't notice these things. But the fact is, is that there's a lot of deep content in most of my show. And I'm not doing this to compare myself and say I'm better than the others. The fact is that there's a difference. And I just think people go, they gravitate to where they want to gravitate to. And I think that the, the what do you call it, the podcasts give people a chance to get into the, uh, into the deep weeds. <laughs> in other words, the grass. And start listening again and say, well, what did he really mean when he said that about Russia today? Can I listen to that again? Because I said something, I think, important about Russia. And I don't know that people caught what I said. I don't think it's a bad thing that Russia is there. I think they're doing what we, we should be doing. But Obama has lost so much credibility that Iran and Saudi Arabia would not listen to him. Neither trust him. So I don't know. We'll see if Russia can do that. I think I've been gifted with a phenomenal amount of energy that I never knew. I always knew I was energetic, but I didn't know I was this energetic. You know, it comes down to the finish line, where you are at the finish line, not at the start. A lot of people start out hot and they, 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 they just, you know, die out along the way. I also believe that we're supposed to leave the world a better place than we find it. I was taught that by liberal professors when I was young and in college. I used to hear that liberal uh, adage. Try to leave the world a better place than you found it. Well, how can you leave the world a better place than you found it when you have a man who is so intent upon destroying everything decent in this country? And I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Why would he flood America with illegal aliens? Does that help even black people? Let's focus on that for a minute. How does flooding America with illegal aliens help the poorest of the poor, whether they be black or white? It does not. So you have to see that we have very powerful interests at work here that transcend race and time. Well, you know, Government Zero had a good run. And it came out in October. It made it to number three on the New York Times list. It's still selling, by the way, because even in the election year, people want to look back and say, wait a minute, this is not old news. Page 71, Islam's 1,400-year war against the world. Maybe that would help the New York Times understand that this didn't begin with George Bush. Maybe the idiots in the media could learn a little history by reading the book. Maybe they could learn that there's a thing called the Vostok ice core samples, which may help them understand that global warming, global cooling is a natural phenomenon, which is certainly not to argue for pollution. See, this is the problem. I want to go into that another time. I don't really want to get sidetracked right now. The fact is is that there's a lot of information there, but uh, I have a new ebook coming out this week, which I'm not going to talk about to any great extent at all. It's on how to fight viral diseases, how to fight colds, how to fight the flu, it's about immigrants and epidemics, about the diseases that immigrants are bringing in and how Obama has opened the floodgates. I have the data on it that's going to make your hair stand up. But, you know, I've talked about this for years. Remember when he flooded America with the Central American kids? Not this summer, but the summer before. And how many of them were bringing in a new strain of flu that, were, that was knocking our kids dead, killing some of them, paralyzing others. It is all in this book on immunity that's an e-book that will be out. I don't even know how to direct you to it right now because it's not for sale yet. But I'm telling you what's on the horizon. And then in May I have my Teddy book coming out. It's a basically a picture book of me and my little dog, Ted. All right, let's get down to brass tacks. It's 2016, and the presidential race is the number one issue for talk radio from now right through the election in November. The average person will still listen to music and sports right until the election. That's if they even want to care about it. That's if they even vote. But we're going to talk about it. I'm not going to do it three hours a day because it's it's boring. How much can you say? Donald Trump ran his first political ad today 
which is worth playing, by the way, because he's doubling down on all his positions. Yet all of the intellectuals hate Donald Trump. Oh, they're so smart. Oh, all of the great left-wingers, they're so smart. The country's being overrun. The economy is being hollowed out. The language is being bastardized. You name it. But they're so smart, they know that Trump's an evil man. Why, he's Mussolini, maybe even Hitler. He's so bad. Why? Why? What has he done that's so bad? Well, well, he, he doesn't want Muslims to come in. Oh, he doesn't. Well, let's analyze that for a moment. And let's see what the waves of recent Muslim migrants have brought to America. Well, let's go to Europe to see the real truth. Came out today. 1,000-plus migrants brawl, rape, sexually assault, and steal at only one German train station on New Year's Eve. It was in Breitbart today by Oliver Lane. Did you hear what happened in Cologne, the hotbed of Islam? It turned into a war zone. A thousand of them celebrated by throwing fireworks into crowds and sexually assaulting German women caught up in the train station. I'll read the, the ordeal to you on the Savage Nation so you can see what they said to her and what they did to her and other girls who they considered fair game because they're not Muslims, they're considered whores. I'm sorry to be so blunt, all of you intellectuals out there, but groping is groping, and cursing is cursing. And the group was made up exclusively of young Muslims who attacked these German girls. So many men groping at her that she couldn't even identify any of the perpetrators to the police. One woman had her tights and underwear torn off by the crowd of young migrants. And a police in Cologne said that there had been rapes at the station that night. So far, police have identified 88 victims of the Muslim gangs, 35 of which were subjected to sexual attacks. Others were men or women simply assaulted or robbed. There's your migrants. You want more of them in America? Then why don't you join the intellectuals at the New York Times who think that Trump is evil? Maybe you can bring some of these people to a neighborhood near you. And then say, I don't know how it happened. Merkel should be arrested for war crimes. Angela Merkel in Germany is a war criminal for what she is doing to Germany. How she gets away with it is astounding. But it's no different than what goes on in America. Back in a minute. Although we have to be very clear that this is not going to solve uh, every violent crime in this country. Uh, it's not going to prevent every mass shooting. Uh, it's not going to keep every gun out of the hands of a criminal. Uh, it will potentially save lives in this country. I'm also confident that uh, the recommendations that are being made by uh, my team here are ones that uh, are entirely consistent with the Second Amendment and Liar. people's law. Right, he's a maniac. He's an out-of-control dictator. Everyone knows this. Anyone who studied the history of America and of dictatorships realizes that we're dealing with an unconstitutional, completely insane man. And the fact of the matter is, a revolution was fought by the antecedents in this nation against the tyranny of one unelected monarch, and now we are surrendering our Constitution to this maniac, this sociopath, Barry Obama. First of all, he's lying about it. The background checks that he wants to put in or close the gun, uh, gun show loophole, whatever, would not have stopped the Muslim murderers in San Bernardino. Where did he get his guns from? Where did the Muslim murderer get his guns from in San Bernardino? What we need is arrests immediate arrests of Department of Homeland Security people who let them into this country even though they never should have been allowed in this country. The wife, that is. That's what we need. We don't need gun control. We need political control. We need control of these psychotic fascists working for Obama around the clock to destroy everything dear in this nation. And believe me, he's going to hit a firestorm. This gun control executive order is going to create he is throwing gasoline on a fire that's already burning. And he's doing it on purpose. As an earlier caller said, the man is a sociopath. He likes exciting and inciting uh, angst in people. 
He loves to get people insane. And the fact is that this Republican-controlled Congress waves the white flag of surrender every time. But he's going to hit a stone wall with this legislative legislation. It's uh, impossible to believe that this man who would be a king does not understand that we will fight this tooth and nail. Not just me. Everyone in the country, including liberal Democrats, will fight him on this. There's only a very small coterie, new word, no, a very small coterie of left-wing fanatics who want the Second Amendment eliminated, as does Obama. But I want to repeat before the show comes to an end that we have played for you today the most important soundbite of 2016, which I hope you will steal if you're in the business and play it on your own show, make believe that you had your staff dig it up. It's Elena Kagan, as she was going through her confirmation hearings to be put on the Supreme Court, quizzed by the quizzling Senator Leahy from Vermont, who set up the question to make, because this was a question that conservatives were worried about. Where did she stand on the Second Amendment? So the quizzling Leahy asks her a set-up question, and you must listen to it. It's the most important soundbite of 2016. Please, Robert, play it now. Is there any doubt uh, after the court's decision, Heller and McDonald, that the Second Amendment to the Constitution secures a fundamental right for an individual to own a firearm, use it for self-defense in their home? There is no doubt, Senator Leahy, that is binding precedent entitled to all the respect uh, of binding precedent in, in, in any case. So that is settled law. Said settled law. Heller is settled law. All of you good liberals, never forget what you just heard in the Savage Nation as you smirk your way into the next hour. Your stooge on the Supreme Court is on record during a confirmation hearing saying that the Second Amendment is settled law. Settled law being settled law in any dialect, whether it's New Yorkies or Far West speakies. Settled law based on Hella. Savage.